Okay, so dear the Bacharja, as Misha Emerni Kanaja last year who are educational culture, I guess while I'm fault of her of Gaji and Kate Seminar Grace on the Grace on the Gaelga. Hello everyone, my name is Emer Kennedy and I am the Deputy Director of Education here at Gael Culture. We're delighted to welcome you all here to the first webinar of Grace on the Gaelga. Uh, and this session is, of course, our English language session. So I'll continue on in English for, for the most part. Um, but Grace on the Gaelga is a new initiative being organised by us here at Gael Culture, aimed at assisting anyone with an interest in or a connection with the Irish language. That's including learners, fluent speakers, and of course, public sector employees. So we want aim to assist them with their language requirements that might include providing information about language rights or about the language obligations in the workplace or providing information and further resources to support you on your own language journey. But to kick off this initiative, we would like to welcome Paddy O'Linnard, Communications Manager at Uffigal Commissioner Changa, the Irish Language Commissioner's Office. Uh, and as many of you may know, there have been major changes in the role of Irish in the public sector in particular in recent years, particularly since the publication of the Official Languages Act and the amendment in 2021. So today, Paddy will discuss some of these changes with us and will provide useful information on uh, on the language obligations for public bodies contained in the Act, how to how the provisions of the Act can be effectively implemented, and also give us some information on the increasing opportunities for Irish speaking professionals. Paddy will speak for about 30 minutes and then we'll have some time for questions at the end. So if you want to write your questions in the chat box during the presentation, we'll come to them at the end. Or you can also raise a virtual hand uh, along the bottom of the screen there. There should be an option for you to raise your hand and we'll, we'll come to them at the end too. I'll be able to unmute anyone who has a question at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Paddy. Gurmila Maikath. Gurmila Emer August. Gramila Mahagivshe, a Vena Ushleta, a Kurvur Nam Loan, er Lativ Levegesh to Glumsa. Thank you all very much for putting your lunchtime aside to be listening to me and to suffer through the death by PowerPoint uh, for the next half hour or so. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of what Ifika Commissioner Tanga does. And um, especially as Emer mentioned, it's a, it's a pretty exciting time from our perspective because of the fact that the uh, Foundation Act of 2003 was uh, significantly enhanced in 2021. So we'll crack off, and as I say, and as Emer says, we'll be uh, more than happy to take whatever questions you might have uh, later on uh, after the presentation. So, just to give you an overview of where we are, are where we're at, um, we're 20 years on the go. Um, we're celebrating 20 years this year. We're located, very unfortunate, really, to be here on the Wild Atlantic Way uh, in Spiddle in County Galway. Seamus O'Concannon was appointed our third Commissioner Tanga on the 6th of December uh, last. We have a staff complement currently of 10, but we have five um, vacancies. So uh, we're operating kind of um, on, a, um, on a skeleton staff at the minute. So we have 10. Uh, we have five vacancies and that'll make a big difference to us when we get to uh, the point where we can recruit those. Um, the legislative framework and obligations, this kind of gives an overview of the original act and gives a kind of an indication as well of the kind of the Dermot Bannon new house a new room and new uh, um, additions to the old house, if you want to call it that. So the original act in 2003, um, it kind of brought in a lot to do with written communications and how public bodies communicate with the public in general. Um, publications, place names, regulations regarding stationary signage and recorded oral announcements were included in that. Now with the 21 Act, it's kind of stretching its arm out a little bit more and trying to envelop a little bit more of the uh, services that are provided by public bodies to encapsulate the likes of names, addresses and titles. And that might sound uh, fairly fundamental, but for Irish language speakers, uh, my name, for instance, is Pa DPA for the IDI father, O father, L-I-O-N, A for the I-R-D. And it's a bit of a nonsense without the Sheena father. So it's not a question of just the Alt-G-R to record it. It's what happens to that 
when it gets onto a spreadsheet or a database, when it sometimes becomes hieroglyphics. So there is a function now in the new act that is going to require of all public bodies to be able to record correctly people's names, addresses, titles, including the Sheena father. Uh, official forms is a, a major bugbear among Irish language speakers where uh, they don't have access to Irish language forms, um, particularly from maybe local authorities maybe, or uh, the health service. So that's something that's being looked at. Logos, uh, we will get into that in a little while. Uh, there is a, a, a provision there for bodies that are rebranding and for bodies, new public bodies that are being formed. Recruitment and language competence. Now, this is a big ticket issue in the 21 Act, where recruitment is pivotal. And from June of last year, um, the clock is ticking for every public body or for public bodies in general to have a cohort of proficiency in Irish among 20% of its staffing by the end of 2030. So we'll get into the weeds in that in a while. Advertising um, came into being in October 22, and it's been very successful to date. And I think you might all agree that uh, the visibility, audibility, the readability of Irish language ads uh, since then has uh, increased incrementally and indeed um, very significantly in that time period. Performance and accountability, section 4B, of the uh, of the of the amended act requires bodies to take responsibility for implementation, and there is also a uh, provision regarding public facing services being provided by third parties. Um, a lot of the I suppose the services that we want um, were uh, I suppose initially accounted for in Irish language schemes that public bodies had, but they were fairly heavily caveated. Uh, they were flawed because of the caveats. It was kind of almost ended up being the first blue moon after a Tuesday on a leap year, we'll do this, this and this. Um, and of course, whenever you see resources um, being available, we will be able to do this, this and this. And of course, we were all subject to board snip and uh, we know the difficulties that that, um, that uh, provided for us all. Counter services, online services, telephone services, websites, Gaeltacht language planning areas, and um, these are all uh, major uh, reference points within the old and new Act. And of course, we interact with all of the other uh, various parts of legislation, the Garda Sikhan, education, health, broadcasting, uh, we interact with all of that. So written communications in 2003, emails, letters, response had to be in the same official language, uh, communication and writing with the general public, in Irish or Irish in English. And then the 21 Act brings in social media, uh, response required in the same official language and public information, um, including general specific public marketing um, in Irish or English. Uh, and uh, stated aim of the 21 Act, as I say, is to have 20% uh, of new recruits. Now, not necessarily new, but there'll be new recruits to the jobs that'll be formed. So they don't have to be, uh, they can be moved around from uh, within the state service as it is. And uh, a lot of you may be in that position and certainly you've taken uh, your first steps in placing yourself perhaps in that, in that position. And it's not that long, it's not that far away. It's two and a half thousand days or even below, more less than that now. Um, so it's, it's a big ask and it's a big ticket issue. Uh, public accountability, as I mentioned previously, section 4B requires every public body and there are 563 public bodies uh, in the country. So it requires uh, of them since March of last year that they nominate from management somebody to um, oversee the performance and compliance and reporting of the obligations under the Act to the CEO or the head of that organisation. The head of that organisation then uh, summarises that report in the annual report. and. Uh, we have kind of joined with the uh, with the Department of Tourism, Ar Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, uh, Sport and Media in asking all public bodies to uh, this, this appointee to make sure that they have a dedicated email address uh, of ATO Acht Tangacha Ifigula at whatever public body's name, .gov.ie. And the reason for that being that, you know, we're a mobile um, uh, personnel, we move from 
position to position within organizations, within departments, within public bodies. So the idea is that irrespective of who is named, that the uh, correct email always lands on the right desk when it comes to compliance. Uh, schemes and standards. Uh, as I said, schemes uh, were Irish language schemes that were heavily caveated, they were uh, quite flawed, and standards are going to replace them. Now, whatever body has a scheme uh, in action at the moment, it'll have to remain so, and all of the commitments therein, until the standards have been uh, confirmed by the minister with the public body in question. And we, we're not sure yet, we're waiting for a roadmap from the department regarding this, we're not sure what's going to be involved in it. We, we're kind of anticipating that there will be overarching uh, targets that will require of public bodies to make all of their um, interactive uh, online uh, uh, activity to make it available, to make websites very accessible, not just static content, but as I say, the interactive uh, uh, paperwork and documentation as well. Um, we would also anticipate that there will be a number of common standards, and you could imagine that um, hospitals, for instance, might have a common standard, but then you might have an extra uh, layer of, uh, of standards applied to the likes of the uh, University College Hospital here in Galway, by virtue of the fact that there is such a large uh, population in the Gaeltacht here uh, attending that hospital. So uh, it, it should make sense when they are uh, distributed. Now, all public bodies will have uh, three months to review and respond. So it's not um, kind of a, a fait accompli by the, when, when the standards are, are distributed. Uh, we imagine it'll take a couple of months for companies to say, well, yes, 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 and no, 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 and this is why. And uh, that'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Um, I mentioned advertising a moment ago. Um, it came into being on the 10th of October um, 2022 and I think the, uh, the, the, the sheer body of advertising that we're seeing, hearing and reading now is helping to normalise the language in the public sphere and you can imagine children coming from a girl school, um, they, they use their Irish language day in day out from 8.30 to 2.30 in the afternoon and that's it. Um, unless they have other uh, Irish language based uh, activities thereafter. But now they're consuming advertising. OK, fair enough. It is advertising. Uh, it's something that we're not always in favour of, but they're hearing ads and seeing ads in the public sphere on TV, on their uh, mobile phones or wherever that might be. And uh, it's normalising the language for them. And it, all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense as a public means of communication than maybe it formerly did. Um, thanks to Gael Khaltour, who commissioned uh, excellent uh, um, research from Amora Research and was only recently published, actually just last week, you can see the benefits of this. 41% uh, are more likely to buy products or services that use Irish in their marketing activities. 26% uh, will pay more for products or services that use uh, the Irish language. And that's even greater uh, when you look at the trends for age groups there below. And I had a meeting two weeks ago with a public body that has a commercial uh, end to it. And they were telling me that it was a very interesting statistic coming to the fore on their, uh, on their I suppose, analysis of the various data from their adver advertising activities. Uh, they said that the, the social media posts of Skelke were attracting significantly higher uh, traction and read time. And when I asked them what significant meant, they said in excess of 20%, they thought they had made a mistake in their calculations and they have checked and double checked and checked again. And sure enough, the uh, read time and attraction uh, that the Irish language posts were achieving by far uh, outweigh those in uh, English. Um, here's an ad that I'm going to show you um, from uh, Board Bia. It's actually one of my favourite ads on TV, which are, um, that's for those of us who like a leg of lamb. Here we go. Even in Gach, Pisa Bia, Major Le Bia, Lish, Mark Shutter, and Mark Collier, 
healing to shin gur targa a er an paidon is orje ord via a yentre ir yevnu e gach kem agus bin tu taco le targori er choliach de yarvia rounding and via le mark choliach ord via whereas feather at brahe yeah definitely not for the vegan uh, cohort uh, or the vegetarian cohort out there um it's a very good ad because uh, as far as i'm concerned lochlan omaron uh, because he is fluent and he did the same ad in english it is a person it's a very personal ad in that there's an interpersonal kind of act to, uh, interaction there uh, we were advising a lot of the public bodies not to use talking heads unless they had great fluency and uh, you know this is the kind of advice we're giving regarding advertising um evergreen campaigns to do them all a scale to get good bang for the creative book and the hse have been excellent in uh, so doing the likes of the annual flu vaccination campaign and uh, the road safety authority as well with the winter ready and the cycle safe campaigns um and we're advising all public bodies to do the recruitment uh, in both official languages uh, again it's leading to that target of 20 percent proficiency in the cohort of uh, employees by 2030 and as i say the clock is ticking at 2,485 days. And really and truly, you don't know what kind of skill sets you're going to get. We don't know what standards are going to be required, but for the same token, it's adding to the headcount. Not everybody needs to be able to write an essay, Oscar get to be of really, really a uh, huge benefit to the public body. Upskill um, via One Learning and Gael Kultur have that contract. And I would always say that there is plenty of talent out who are actually bilingual, who are really good at uh, getting the work done well, like we just saw there. And I suppose one of the major concerns when 10A was initially mooted and launched was that there wasn't capacity to handle all of the advertising that this would generate for the Irish media. And sure enough, build it and they will come. There's an element of uh, the field of dreams of Kevin Costner involved. And as you can see, a lot of you may have been familiar with extra.ie. There's now extra g.ie. And uh, I'm aware that, you know, there are a number of A-Review, there's Ugeilge, uh, Phoebean are coming on board, and there's a new uh, Irish language newspaper, a weekly newspaper going into print within the next few weeks. Uh, I think um, extra g as well, or Shachtan are looking as well at a podcast. Uh, which would be compliant and taking advertising. So there's a lot going on uh, out there when it comes to Irish language media. Here's another ad from the uh, Department of Justice. It's possibly my favourite Irish ad, and maybe you'll see why when you see it. victims charter Carter Olas are folded, your hair be she ash to pawn, and a kyarta a tall gut, a gazaran takiak a tall egg tasto a gut, to kyarta a gut, to takiak the gut, to go a gut, fight a quitcha a garchna nias for duck, and a cur a folded, a real to snaheran. And again, it's the VO and the visuals, the graphics that do all the communication for you. And all you need to hear to make sense of it, if you can follow victims charter you know exactly what's going on there and i think the tone and the timbre of the ad is superb uh, and it's a great production uh, we've been very busy in the last year designing a, a bespoke portal to to i suppose to um measure the compliance with this provision in the act and it took us a while and we've distilled it down to something quite easy and uh, what we are doing is taking uh, all of the body of advertising and bundling it by medium. So if a company or a body does, you know, 400 radio ads in the year for 2023, well, we don't need to see all the campaigns. We just need to know that you did 400 ads for the radio and how many of them were done in English, how many of them were done in Irish. And hopefully there's 20% there uh, that were broadcast in Irish. Uh, the same goes for all the other media. And uh, we we... To date, we've had a really good response to the portal. Uh, we're gathering as well the um, information regarding spend because the second part of the provision is that 5% of all 
uh, of uh, public bodies' advertising budget is spent on Irish language advertising placed with Irish language media. So we're asking for total spend. How much was spent on English? How much was spent on Irish? And again, we're hoping that the uh, five percent will be uh, achieved with that. Uh, that's just a, a video, an accompanying video that we did, a screen grab video to show how the uh, ads or how the uh, portal actually works. And I think uh, so far, um, I think it's been fairly Lady Bird book like in uh, in its simplicity. And uh, we're hoping to get all of that uh, compliance in by the end of this month. Um, so overseeing all of this and all of these uh, provisions, I suppose, we oversee quite a bit when it comes to the compliance aspect of it and giving advice to public bodies. But there is a National Advisory Committee under Section 18, which was formed in June of 22. And uh, the plan is that they are charged with coming up with a national plan. Um, and this will be delivered in June of this year. Now, I know that uh, the a lot of the research has been carried out by the University of Galway. Some of it will be delivered next month, and uh, we're hoping to get sight of this plan by the end of uh, the summer, perhaps uh, early autumn. Uh, the big ticket issue, again, is, is, is how to see and how to get around making sure we can get to 20% of all public service um, workers being, uh, being able to or proficient in the language. Um, there will be specific dates by which all uh, uh, by which Irish shall be working language in all offices of public bodies in Gaeltacht uh, and language planning areas. Annual progress report will be uh, delivered to the Minister by Ifigan Commissioner Tanga. And recruitment, as you can see, it's section 18C3B. Uh, again, it just sets out what is required. But we're not sure yet until we see where the gaps are in the national plan and where the gaps can be filled and how easily they can be filled and how we can um, manipulate our current cohort of Irish language speakers in the public service to um, to make their work, um, um, to make it viable for them to work to the medium of Irish. And we're not sure yet what the competency requires. So um, I really think it's very important that the bus driver on the 424 from Galway to Carrow has good spoken Irish. I don't need him to write an essay uh, at all for me. Um, will it mean more Irish language officers? Yes, but it's not. Everybody won't be an Irish language officer. It's just they'll be doing the same jobs as you and I. Just ask Eilge. Um, It'll be across all grades. And somebody asked me the other day, I was in uh, my Asian plaza, uh, giving a presentation. Well, do you want the consultant surgeon to fix your leg or to speak Irish? You know, I said, well, actually, I'd prefer if the consultant surgeon did both. Um, but yes, my leg um, would probably be a, a, a major consideration there. Um, will it be every one of the 563 public bodies? We don't know. There are many public bodies that don't have any public facing um, functions. So I, I can't see why the National Oil Reserve Agency might require an Irish language speaker. I'm, I'm not saying that, that they don't, but I'm not sure how often they need to get in touch with the public per se, or vice versa. And we're coming at this from a very low base, and this is where the is major issue is, I suppose. Um, from 2018 to 21, there were only 16 jobs advertised that required the Irish language on pass and um, public appointment service. So that is um, 16 out of 8,324, 0.2%. Now that's not completely indicative, or, uh, but it does give an indication as to uh, the size of the mountain that is there to be climbed. Um, when I say recruit, do all your recruiting in Irish and English, we're all, you know, all public bodies are, um, are competing with each other for the same uh, body of people, the same pool of people. So these are, this is a breakdown of basically the Act, of the 21 Act. Um, everything will be, all provisions will be automatically uh, commenced by the end of this year if they haven't been already done so. 
And uh, most of that is housekeeping. And you will understand this well from having read many pieces of legislation during your time uh, in the workplace. Um, but, you know, there are a number of them that I discussed earlier on, uh, sections four and five, when it comes to um, provisions in sections 9A to 9E, which are the official forms, uh, the names, addresses, and Sheena Father, the logos, for instance, the likes of um, Irish Water became uh, Ishka Aaron, so that comes under 9C, so they were uh, getting ahead of the legislation. The most recent, maybe, public body that was commissioned, that was uh, that was uh, started was Commission the Maon, and their title is Oscail again. It's a kind of a return to form more than it is anything uh, too revolutionary because Aaron Road Aaron, uh, Bus Aaron, Bus Clear, a lot of the public bodies uh, were in Irish originally. So these are again the provisions that have yet to come uh, to be commenced, but it will happen automatically by the end of this year. Um, and I suppose the last one here, which is third party public facing services, 9E, um, it'll, it'll basically basically require any, any, any contracted company, third party company um, that has a contract with a public body to, um, to comply with the Official Languages Act and the provisions therein, as if they were the public body themselves. So that's going to have a big um, uh, impact. For instance, um, certainly the likes of the local authorities, they employ quite, quite a lot of uh, subcontractors to do some work for them. So uh, compliance with the Official Languages Act is going to be part of their remit uh, going forward. Um, again, this is the functions of what we do here. Um, we have, I suppose, a double side to our uh, our uh, delivery. We advise public bodies on their obligations, and we advise members of the public on their rights. Um, we investigate complaints, about 600, between six and 700 complaints a year, and uh, implementation of monitoring of the Act as well. So we make sure that the commenced provisions of the Act are being adhered to. Uh, we launch statutory investigations where we have failed maybe to resolve uh, certain issues, and we do this where appropriate. It's not something we take uh, on too lightly. Other enactments, um, status and use of official languages, the investigation and addition of implementation uh, monitoring under the 21 Act, they all came into being. And uh, it charges us with a, a little bit more responsibility, I suppose, uh, from a helicopter perspective, giving a, uh, an overview of how the uh, Act is being complied with. And we thrive on our um, connectivity with the public and with you. And uh, if you want to take a screen grab of the, um, of the QR code there, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, we take uh, quite a lot of communication via OLIS at missionaire.ie and uh, that is the best place to get a hold of us on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, that's the end of the presentation but it's certainly not the end of our session and I'd like to open to the floor uh, and Emer, if you want to be um, the, the judge and jury and referee here I'm more than happy uh, for that to happen. In Chitwell, Gurmila Maikat of Fadi Vishishin and Similar Fad, Agus Lergus Intachavian, Eran Actain, Agus Er Nadulgish Ata, Er Agriakti, Elaich Nachanga Anish. So, firstly, just want to thank you, Paddy, for that great session. It was a brilliant insight into the act itself and the, the obligations that public bodies now have. So, as you said, we have some time for questions. We already have a question in on the chat box here. So, as I say, you can write them in the chat. Or if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you and you can ask the question to Paddy that way. Um, but the question we have in here is uh, advertising definition is very wide. So all communication with the public on services, legislation, policies, etc. Can you define communication? Uh, it is not just ads and public consultations. Yeah, that's, that's that's a that's a very good question. Yeah, the I think our traditional understanding of what an ad is has been uh, greatly um, enhanced by the legislation. 
Uh, I think legislators uh, want to um, to cast a net over certain aspects of public bodies' activities that wouldn't traditionally be called advertising. And I know that um, Section uh, 10A to B 1 to 5, uh, where recruitment of staff, that makes sense, uh, the purchase and sale of land or assets, um, and, uh, um, and uh, there, there's an element there as well where in Section 10A to uh, B1, where it, section yes, where it's any commercial communication. So we, we, we in this office, we had to consult with um, the sector, the advertising sector, because they had never heard of some of these terms. And um, our job was to try and make sense of what that meant. And we have, in as well as we, uh, in as well as we can, we we brought on board a consultant um, who was previously the CEO of the largest ad, ad agency in the country, and uh, he helped us make sense of a lot of the wording in the legislation, or to manipulate it in such a way that it was workable for uh, both the public body and for ourselves here, and for the advertising sector. And all of that advice is available on our homepage. It's on uh, commissioner.ie, and there's a drop-down menu on New Act 2021. There's a slide deck there of uh, Section 10A and what all that means. And we have defined it as best we can. Uh, sometimes there are grey areas, but I'll tell you what we thrive on is um, email us a scenario or email us a, a sample and say, does this qualify or doesn't it? And we'll go into conclave here and we'll give you a thumbs up and a thumbs down and a reason why uh, fairly quickly. I think it's great to know that that service is available, Avadi, and the, the email address is still visible on the screen there. So I'm sure uh, people will be, make good use of that. Will uh, I stop sharing email or? or... Uh, no, I think it's fine to leave it there. Think, um, yeah. If, yeah, people can make use of the QR code or sure. they have the, the email address there too. Another question has come in here. So if a commercial semi-state body is not listed as a public body under the Act on your website, what are our responsibilities in regards to the Act? Well, if you're not on schedule of public bodies responsible, you will know whether you are or not, because you will have been in receipt of correspondence from us uh, over the past two years. Um, so if you haven't been in receipt of um, correspondence from us or the department, uh, then you're not um, you 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 there. You have nothing to to concern yourself with. Um, I I'm I'm not sure how many of those there are. I don't think there are more than a, than a handful. Um, but certainly from our perspective, um, if your uh, body is prescribed or prescribed by the schedules uh, responsible to the act, well, I'm afraid. Um, we we certainly don't have in our remit or in our gift any any form of derogation. So compliance is is uh, is mandatory. It's um it's the law like any other law, I suppose. Thanks for that, Paddy. Um, just uh, got a couple of questions myself, as most of things that occurred to me as you were going through. Um, you mentioned or you had a, a question mark, I suppose, beside proficiency in the language and what that means. Yeah. Does that mean that there are going to be opportunities for people with all different levels of Irish, not just people who are extremely fluent and excellent grammar? Could you expand a little bit on that for us? Maybe? Well, 100%. And, and I think, I think this is something that, um, that, you know, there's, there is definitely, uh, you have, you're playing a huge role in this either. And Gael Hultur generally are playing a huge role in this because you're, um, equipping, uh, so many um, employees of the public service uh, and with linguistic skills from levels of the absolute beginner right up to um, to C1 or C... Is a C2 is the highest? Well, C2 is the highest available, but C2 yeah, is C1 the highest is available. probably, yeah, probably yeah. high enough for most people. It's yeah. very, very fluent. In fact, it... Yeah, yeah and that is, that's everybody. really where the rubber hits the road. We don't know where these standards are going to land. The only thing I would recommend anybody, uh, all of our our um, our, our uh, contingent here, is do as, do what you can to upskill if you're interested in 
um, in functioning through the Irish language. Do as much as you can. And there are the Tastasor Pachelge, it's a European language framework um, exam, which places you, gives you a good idea of where you're at. As I say, the bus driver or the counter uh, operator in the in the in the in the uh, on post or the guard on on the side of the road. We don't need these people to write us essays, but we do need them to be able to converse and to be proficient uh, from that perspective. And you know, this is a this is I'm not sure if it's a proven fact, but I'd say anecdotally for sure, um, the vast majority winter the myself included, wouldn't have anything near perfect Irish. Um, and that would be, you know, that would be a fairly, I know it's a fairly broad brush to say that, but our Irish would be far from perfect in the written, in its, in, in the written form, even though we, we, we would strive here in this office, I suppose, to, uh, to negate that as much as possible, negate any, um, anomalies there. But, um, yes, every grade people, you know, will require, um, the ability to, um, for instance, in revenue to parse the complexities of a tax return. Uh, but for the same token, the person who answers the phone and, 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 and uh, is answering the phone uh, to the Irish speaker, um, they don't need to be able to parse that documentation with the customer or with the, with the uh, member of the public who's calling. They just need to be able to direct that person to, you know, to, the, to the employee who can. So um, that kind of gives an indication that there are two different levels just there. And again, you know, do I want my consultant surgeon to fix my leg or speak Irish to me? Both, please. But, you know, there's no reason why this won't go from um, the grade of a clerical officer all the way up to um, sec gen. And uh, this is this is this is um, this is something I suppose that we're going to have to kind of grapple with or to get our heads around and see how this is going to be workable. It's not as if the um, the orthopedic surgeon with Irish will only deal with Irish language speakers. He or she will be fixing um, multilingual legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great point that, you know, not everyone needs to have the same level and it may just depend on the role that you're applying for or that you, you would be interested in doing, which skills you might need in particular. Um, another question, just when you were talking about signage and, you know, the obligations that yeah. will be under um, bodies going forward, is there any risk that some organisations or bodies might provide something in the Irish language for the sake of providing it in the Irish language and that it won't actually be up to the same standard as what they're providing in English? And will there be any monitoring of this or do you have any advice on how to ensure perhaps that it will be at the same standard? Oh, yeah. I mean, the the the, the regulations from statutory instrument 391 2008, they set out in in really good detail uh, what's required when it comes to signage. Uh, as well as that, we have a, a guidebook and it's published and it's available on our website as well. And I urge every public body to take a, um, it's a PDF, in PDF form, download it, print it off, uh, bind it, have it there uh, available to you. It's a little Bible and it's great when it comes to uh, signage, to stationery, to oral public announcements, um, uh, you name it, all the regulations are in incorporated in there. And it's a great little body of work. Um, and the public in general are great. We, we, we investigate a lot of anomalies when it comes to signage uh, around the country. And public bodies are great to come to us and say, look, we're erecting these uh, finger posts in such and such a place. Would you have a look at them and see, do you think they're okay? And ultimately, Imer, what the only requirement, the, the, the requirement is, it's a parity of, of esteem. It's equality is, uh, is, is the touchstone here. Uh, everybody's looking for um, that the, 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 Irish text will be first, that it won't be any less visible or in smaller font or text size uh, and will impart the same information as English. That's as simple as it is. So um, the public are great for pointing these anomalies out to us. Uh, there's a particular hospital. Uh, it's in the news a lot for a lot of other reasons, but um, they have many um, various departments in the hospital where the door to the department might be 
uh, radiotherapy department, uh, Osberle, and the Irish uh, the Irish translation is Igfanacht uh, er Astrochon. So uh, the, these things these things are brought to our attention. But for those of you who didn't understand, the the translation for the radio or the, the radiography department is awaiting translation. Uh, so it's a, it's um look it's always a work in progress, and it sometimes it's just to do with. Um, people who haven't um, engaged with the uh, with the legislation. Um, just put one last question for myself, and maybe if anyone else is interested in writing any more questions into the chat box, uh, you could do it now, just I'm aware of time uh, restraints and our session's nearly up. But just the last question for myself, maybe you mentioned that there is a great deal of talent available, bilingual speakers or actors, you know, people that you might want to use in advertising campaigns. Is there any database or anywhere we can access information like that who might be good in these sorts of things? Yeah, um, very good question and very, um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is really uh, where the rubber hits the road um, and, you know, I'm not trying to be reductive and bring this down to an equine level, but uh, you know the horses that are running in Cheltenham today are not horses you're going to um, to saddle for the uh, for various events at the Olympics. So it's horses for courses, I think. And you know, translation services and there is a seal of of uh, of approval uh, of translators and a, and a register of them on Forest Lugailga's home uh, web page. Um, Translators generally are not copywriters. And what I mean by that is translators, um, especially a lot of the, a lot of your bodies out there, um, folks, you're, you're, you have translating companies on, um, on your books under contract to uh, translate uh, various documentation, let's say the public, um, the annual report, et cetera. And that is a very different skill set to, um, to advertising because advertising distills everything down to its um, to its bare minimum. And if you, the one thing that's kind of common in all advertising is the simplicity of, uh, of uh, terminology that's used. And I, I remember when I was uh, in a former life, a primary school teacher, I remember uh, in college that the, the main aim of uh, reading, writing and arithmetic at the time uh, was to achieve the reading level of eight years of age with the children. And the reason for that was that they could be functional in society and that, that they could walk out, uh, read a signpost, that they could follow a map and that they could make simple calculations. And, you know, it, it always kind of comes back to me when, when I'm looking at, uh, at advertising that the simpler the message, the better. Um, and we saw that perhaps with some of the examples there earlier on. Um, also, I think if you look at, you know, I'm not saying just TG Car, but RTE and in recent times, even more so as well on Virgin Media, there are Irish language programs being broadcast. These are all Irish speakers. So quite a few of them are, um, are actors and like uh, Lachlan O'Mara in there, who's from South County Dublin, uh, they're completely fluent obviously if they have english you know they have well, obviously if they have irish you know they have english pretty much um uh, 100 percent but all the people you see in russell or 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 elsewhere on tg kahar for instance they're all um very very fluent and uh, the likes of i mentioned um, dermot bannon's room to improve the narrator on that tomaso sullivan tom o'sullivan um, he, he's wonderfully fluent and uh, these people are there. It's a question of, I suppose, finding them in the, in the same repository. Agencies uh, are coming to the point where they're kind of maturing into this. Uh, they've been learning quite a bit over the last two years and uh, they're getting there. But I would certainly, if I was putting a contract out for the provision of creatives, I would you know, always put in a line into the tender document must be compliant with uh, Official Languages Act or Official Languages legislation. I know it's kind of the buck still stops with you, with the public body, but it certainly does kick the can a bit over to the uh, pub, over to the creative agencies who are making the ads to um, put a little bit more thought, maybe, and a little bit more creativity. It's not a question of translation. It's a question of delivering the same message. And even though we would be 
very strict uh, in our office when it comes to signage being um, um, being you know imparting the same information uh, and being correct and the correctness of that um, and no abbreviations used in the Irish language unless they're used in English etc I think there's an element of leeway where the we want the message of the ad to land and to land properly um, and an example of that the IDA came to us very soon very quickly after the uh, enactment of um, of the 21 Act and they said well we do all our all of our advertising in China uh, Germany and the States um, and we were not sure that um, we need to be spending public money at this and we said absolutely we we, we don't want public money to be spent uh, on advertising that doesn't reach um, the audience that that's required so I think uh, taking a sensible approach um, and you know asking um, the agencies to engage with um, good copywriters, people who are actually better at delivering the message than translating the document. Um, again, it's horses for courses, and I think it needs to be uh, developed. And it's something that I believe Forrest McGuigan are uh, talking about uh, filling the gap there by maybe getting some workshops together for creative agencies and for public bodies alike. Thanks very much, Polly. I think that's great advice about being perhaps mindful of the obligations from the start of the process instead of just coming at it from a translation point of view at the end. So if it, you know when you're putting something out for tender, to to be mindful of it, and then hopefully you'll reap the rewards at the end and have an, an effective yeah. ad or whatever it might be. Yeah, hundred percent, Emer. And I think I think that's a, a very good point. That you know, be consider be you know consider the Irish language as part of the of the of the entire. Um, uh, of the entire output, uh, as you say, Jim, you know, not to be leaving until the end. Oh God, we have to get our twenty percent away, or we have to do the five percent. No, I, I mean, just there is very good, and if you think um, of you know very com very commercially minded uh, entities like uh, Diageo, uh, they have an Irish language ad. Uh, it's been running for nigh on twenty years, no more, thirty years on television. And it's the, the 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 pub on the island awaiting the delivery of a barrel. And all you hear is Tosha the Chacht. And you know it's a Guinness ad. <laughs> and it's really good because you know they roll it out every 10 years or every five years. And it's still as good now and as relevant now as it was then. And um, it's just the quality of the of the creative. And you know, when you see commercially minded uh, entities like that or commercial entities like that really engaging with uh, advertising uh, that'll last and that'll you know uh, stand the test of time i think that's um that's a that's a good lesson to be learned there well i think that's maybe a good note to end things on Poddy. uh we there's one final question and it's just will the slides and recording be made available afterwards so yes we have recorded this session we will be making it available and Paddy, perhaps if you're happy with that as well we can maybe circulate the slides amongst those who have attended today. absolutely yeah um, I, I don't think great. i don't think there's anything uh, there's i don't think there's anything too um controversial uh, <laughs> in the slide deck yeah. Well, as I say, we'll maybe end things there then. So, Bwala Mawiachas ago a lot to Arisha Paddy as a girl later a year now doing a new August Bwala Mawiachas ago liver fad as a violin in you. So, thanks very much to Paddy for that great presentation and to everyone who gave up their lunch time to attend the session today. You can get more information about Grace on the Gaelga on our website gaelculture.com. But everyone who has signed up will receive an email about all upcoming webinars that we have as part of Grace on the Gaelga. And of course, there's more information about all of our courses, courses from complete beginners up to more fluent speakers available on our website too. So Gurmil Mike Dirisha Fadi, Agus Gachdinya, Agus uh Bimwich Kai Tarish, Slanga File Harja, and more. Mila Falja, Agus uh Dirishachtene, uh Sira Bank, Agus uh Loyal Padrick, Fevashiv, Agus Bichachtan the Gaelga, Yasabukhamak.